You need to be saved from the world. First John chapter number two, verse 16, it talks about the two lust and pride, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. This is what drives the world. This is the energy of its life. This is the object of its affection. The lust of the flesh is a monster that will consume you. The lust of the eyes will enslave you, and the pride of life will harden you to Almighty God. There's a progression to this. The flesh, the fleshly mind, the addicted body, the corrupted soul. You can always tell when you've fallen into something that has become your God and has more power over you than you have power. That's the power of sin is its ability to deceive, make you think you can enjoy it without it enjoying you. You eat it, but it will wind up eating you. It leads to the lust of the eyes, the all demanding desire to have more and more, but never satisfied. It leads to the pride of life. I will take what I want. I will destroy all in my path. I will enjoy all life has to offer. For I am worthy, for I am better than you. Darwin said it well when he said the survival of the fittest. I am simply living out my superior self over you. I'm wonderful. I love me. That is the pride of life. And that is what permeates life and the church that is preached from the pulpits today. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The driving force of this world is not limited to the pagan, agnostic, atheist. It finds its way into the religious world. The lust of the flesh is satisfied on a different level. The flesh is much more subtle and sophisticated than given credit. The lust of the eyes see ever so clearly the things to be gained in religion. The pride of life enjoys the recognition of religion just rank and authority. Christ rejected wealth. He rejected recognition. He rejected authority as only it came to him by the scripture, the word of God. He did not come to start a new religion, but to fulfill the divine revelation and the truth as to who he is. You need to be saved from the world and you need to be saved from the devil. Satan is smarter than you. Satan is stronger than you. Satan has far more experience than you have. Satan has a vast array at his disposal. He has a past and a future and you are no match for Satan. Oh, but preacher, 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes, amen, but who is in you? The old man or the new man? The Bible says to put off the old man and to put on the new man. Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse 22 says that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The Greek word translated put off is apotathemi which means to renounce. How do I put off the old man? I renounce the old man. When the accuser of the brethren comes to me and says that it's all in my mind, that it was nothing but an emotional experience. I say back to him, Satan, I am not what I used to be. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. The blood has cleansed my sins away. I renounce you. I deny you. I reject you. You are not my God. From this day forward, a renouncing has taken a position. When you renounce something, you say, I am by the grace of God who I am. I've been born again. I've been saved. I've been washed in the blood of the Son of the living God. To renounce is to take a position. To renounce is to declare who you are. To renounce is to bring to a confrontation you and Satan and say to him, you are not my God anymore. To renounce therefore is to put off the old man. It's not to coddle him. It's not to please him. It's not to make peace with him. You can never make peace with the flesh. There is never a place of peace. It is to bring him before you and nail him to a cross. The Bible said we have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts thereof. The only place for the old man is to be nailed to a tree. There's never a peace to be found with him. And so the devil, sure he'll have you quote, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. One of the worst things about quoting the Bible is when you quote it from your head and let the words flow out of your mouth, but it doesn't come forth from the heart. If it doesn't come forth from the heart, you don't cling to it. You don't embrace it. You don't believe it. It doesn't affect your life. It has no change in who you are. So therefore, it's only coming from the brain, from the head. And my friend, by doing that, it becomes null and void. You become jaded to the truth. We call it gospel hardened. You hear, you hear, you hear, 
week after week after week. You take in the Word of God, but you process it in your mind, and you let it fly away quickly. It's got to reach the heart. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Who's in you? If it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, there's power in you. If it's the risen Lord Jesus Christ, He has already made a show of them openly and triumphed over them. If it is the blood of Christ that you cling to as your righteousness and your strength, then all the thing has changed that's necessary for your victory in this world. You put on the new man. What is the word poop? The word put on is from the Greek word in duo. It means to clothe yourself with the new man. So the old old man is renounced and the new man is put on.
Thank you.
the very moment that Adam sinned against God, the very moment he rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, the Bible says they realized that they were naked. And the first thing they did was to go out and find fig leaves and soak them together to cover their nakedness. Fig leaves in the Bible, therefore, forevermore stands as man's attempt to cover his nakedness, to cover his shame, to cover the part that God had already covered. It's man trying to cover what only God can. And the Bible said when the Lord came to them, he brought the skins of a sheep, of a lamb, and he brought that where blood had been shed, where something's life had been given, and then he could come and cover them with this, but it was never the same. For when they lost that glory, they lost it. The apostle Paul says, I would to be covered. He said, when I leave this world, I don't want to leave this world simply as a spirit that goes out into the presence of God. I want something waiting for me when I get there. And God said, there's a house in heaven that is eternal in the heavens, not made with the hands of men. And that will be our home to clothe us. There's something about us that's different from the animal. The animal isn't even conscious of the fact that he's not clothed that you are. You want something to cover you up. You want to cover up your nakedness. You don't want to show it to people because there's still in you that innate thought, that, that idea, that graciousness from God, that you're a creature made in the image of God. And so the Bible says, now that you've put off the old man, that you've renounced what you used to be, you put on the new man. You wrap yourself up in something that's different. You cover yourself with something that's greater. You cover yourself with something that covers your nakedness. But I tell you this morning, the only thing that can cover your sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. And the only coat that I want to wear is the coat of righteousness of His righteousness, not mine. I will not parade my flesh in front of you. I will not parade my righteousness in front of you. I will not parade my ability in front of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I will Christ in Him and Him alone. That's all I care that you see today. Not me, but Him. Amen. And so how do you clothe yourself? First of all, you agree with God. You get down to the nitty gritty of who you are and what you are and what makes you tick. Here's the proud Pharisee that stood by Stephen as they stoned him to death. And the Bible says they cast their coats at this young man's feet. The same one once he was born again. He said, I am of all the sinners on this earth, chief. I'm the chiefest of sinners. Here's a man who understood his nature and his essence. He realized that he needed somebody a whole lot bigger than him. That's part of clothing yourself. It's the idea that you can't do anything about your sinful condition. By the grace of God, I am what I am. So therefore, you agree with God. Secondly, you don't trust yourself at all. That fleshly mind that you're listening to me with right now is processing my words. Your fleshly mind is taking what I'm saying and processing it in your head. But what you don't realize is that fleshly mind has been brainwashed by an ungodly world. This ungodly Bible denying Christ rejected world has infiltrated your mind the way you think like they think. You process spiritual truth the way they do. And that is the reason that you don't receive from the Lord. The Bible said, therefore, let this mind be in you. This helmet of salvation, the apostle says to put on, has to do the way you think. I will not have this world dictate to me definitions and terms. It will not define holiness to me. It will not define righteousness to me. It will not define salvation to me. Glory to God, I will let the Word of God define these things to me. It will not dictate to me how I think. This blessed book will tell me how to think. So therefore, this fleshly mind will reject the truths that I give you. This fleshly mind will deny what I'm saying to you. And my fleshly mind is as sorry and corrupt as your fleshly mind. I want the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who being the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. I want you to know, my friend, I want the grace of God to let me die and him live. I diminish and he's glorified. My name leaves and his is exalted. Not only that, but you pray for discernment. Religion in America is a mixture of Buddhism, Christianity, hedonism, and secularism. And who am any more isms you want to throw in there, pile them all in the pot. It makes no difference. They all stink. Christianity in America is an amalgamated, mongrel association of garbage. It's a shame and a disgrace at what calls itself Christian in this country. And let me tell you something, folks. A Apostasy is apostasy. You better watch how you're thinking.
What's the difference between morality and righteousness? Well, righteousness comes forth from the divine. Morality is man's attempt to pull himself up by his bootstraps and make himself look better in the sight of other men. And God has rejected all of it. The Bible said, try the spirits. I got on a web page a couple of days ago, highly recommended by some, talking about how spiritual it was. I got on that web page and looked from top to bottom. Oh, they said a lot about God. They said a lot about the spirits. They said a lot about spiritual things and the vision they had for the world. And I kept saying, where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Where's he at in all this? Where's Jesus? Hey! Where's Jesus? Hey! Where's Jesus? He wasn't in it. Had no part of it. It was all a man-made piece of garbage. Try the spirit. The red flags popped up. If they're not glorifying the blessed Lamb of God that came straight out of the pit. I don't care if they came out of the Baptist church, Methodist church, where they came from. If it doesn't glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, you can have it. It's not even worth the paper it's stamped on. Garbage. But you gotta try and so it's all about who? Preacher Lawson. That's what it's not, not about me. What's it about, preacher? It's about him. It's about him. That's all it's ever been about. That's all it'll ever be about. Do you understand everything of God's creation? Only has meaning, it only has essence, and it only has a future in the name of Jesus. Do you realize that everything God's ever going to do for a man, now, past, present, and future, is in the name of Jesus? Do you realize that God has put power in that name above every name? That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess? Do you realize that he has the beauty of holiness? And that's a beauty compared to the beauty of this world. This beauty fades like a tar pit compared to the beauty of holiness. Do you realize that he's the only righteous one that ever walked the face of this earth? And the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ is the righteousness of a man who lived a sinless, perfect life. And that righteousness becomes your righteousness when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You realize that every soul that ever walked the face of this earth lives, breathes, it's going to die one day. From dust thou art into dust thou shalt return. And if a soul ever goes any higher than dust, it'll go through the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection of the life. Everything else that ever existed is corruption. It's all death. It's all damnation. There is no hope or no future outside of the Lord Jesus. You realize that your sins can in you. Your sin's a burden to you. You can't bear it. You can't do anything about it. You can't get it off of you. You can't cleanse yourself. You can brainwash your mind, think you're better. It's not going to change a thing. But let Jesus Christ touch you one time with his precious blood and he'll wash your sins away. Amen. He is to a sinner, my friend, life, love, liberty, hope, peace, happiness, joy, and the future. He is the greatest thing that ever happened for a sinner. He said, well, a preacher, I want to meet one of these sinners you're talking about. Go home and look in the mirror. Take a good long look. I got in front of a mirror yesterday. I usually try to avoid them, but this time I looked into it. And when I looked into that mirror, I looked at those two eyes looking at me. And I said this, and God's my witness, I don't trust you just like that. I stood right in front of that mirror, and I said, I don't trust you. I trust Jesus. Jesus, deliver me from me. Hallelujah! He's the Savior of mankind. That includes me. There's no hope outside him. He's the beauty of God, the glory of God, the grace of God, the peace of God, the mercy of God. He's all of it wrapped up in one person. That's why we sing about him. That's why we preach about him. That's why we pray to him. That's why we talk about him. There's nobody like Jesus. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, how precious is that name. It'll become precious to you when your life ebbs away. It'll become precious to you when tragedy comes. It'll become precious to you when you really need something spiritual for your soul. When Christ went to the cross, he tasted death for me, you, and every soul that ever lived. It makes no difference what his sin is. The blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. Are you low down? You can be saved. Are you a murderer? You can be saved. Are you a rapist? You can be saved. Are you a killer? You can be saved. Are you a thief? You can be saved. Are you an adulterer? You can be saved. I'm an assassin preacher. You can be saved. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. That grace is for me and that grace is for you. Hallelujah. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Blessed be his holy name. Father, in Jesus' name, I've said what you put in my heart to say. Lord, I want them to get a hold of thee and not me. I want them to be filled with thee and not me. I want them to walk out of this house this morning impressed with thee and not me. I can't do a thing for them, Lord. I just simply bring the message. God, you can do all things. In Jesus' sweet holy name I pray. In Jesus' name I ask you to bless the Lamb of God. Amen.